I did not know what a senior thesis was before I started college, which is kind of embarrassing. I thought it was a grad school thing. Turns out I was thinking of dissertations. So here's a definition from Google. A senior thesis is a large independent research project that students take on during their senior year of college. Sometimes thesis projects are graduation requirements. And even though it was required for the major I was in, I was excited about it. A thesis project is really just an opportunity to use what you've learned in your first few years of college and apply that to a research area that's interesting to you. I had classmates who did their thesis on sports or movies. I chose crime because I'm a diehard Brooklyn Nine-Nine fan. Just kidding, I only got into that this year. I worked on this project with three other math majors, which was part of the reason it ended up being so many pages. Usually thesis projects are not group projects, though you do usually work with a thesis advisor who oversees the project. We also worked with the police department of a major US city that I'm not going to mention in this video. The actual results of our thesis project are confidential, but I can talk about the general scope of the project and our methodology. The police department had over a decade of crime data. They wanted us to use that data to identify current and developing crime hotspots, which are areas with high crime rates. The end goal was for the police department to be able to reduce crime by targeting those areas. Our first step was doing a literature review. We spent a couple months on this to get a solid understanding of what had been done in the past and which tactics were most effective, particularly for the type of data we were working with. Our data spanned over 13 years. Most studies aimed at targeting crime hotspots use more recent data because it's difficult to maintain over a decade of crime data. There was one study done in Seattle on 14 years of crime data that was super effective and very relevant for our research. A lot of our project was based off of this study. I'll link it below, it's only about 30 pages. The Seattle study used a group-based trajectory model to group street segments that had similar crime trajectories. These are the 18 different crime trajectories that they identified. By doing so, they were able to identify developing hotspots and essentially nip them in the bud before they became fully fledged hotspots. This was a really effective way to reduce crime because most crime occurs in a tiny percentage of areas. In the Seattle study, four to five percent of the street segments accounted for about 50 percent of the crime. Other major cities have similar statistics. So when you're able to isolate that small portion of street segments and increase police presence in those areas, crime rates overall drop dramatically. Once we finished the literature review, we started part two, cleaning the data. We did most of this in Stata with a little help from ArcGIS, which is a geographic mapping software. We had used Stata before in econometrics classes, but this was our first time using ArcGIS, which was not easy. The data we had was pretty clean already. However, the cleaning did involve several steps, including things like removing artificial hotspots, understanding outliers, and handling potential errors in the data. The data cleaning probably took less time than the literature review, although it's hard to say exactly how long we spent on data cleaning because it overlapped a little bit with part three, which was the exploratory data analysis and visualization. There were a few points where we were building out charts or putting together summary statistics. Something looked off, we took a closer look at the data and realized there were a few more things that needed to be done to clean the data. I've talked about this in other videos, but I personally enjoy data cleaning. I think it gets a bad rap, especially because the term cleaning in general has kind of a negative connotation. I wish there was a more glamorous name for data cleaning, like, I don't know, data beautification. Maybe people wouldn't hate it as much if it sounded cooler and more important. It really is a very important process, especially if you want to do any sort of statistical analysis or modeling. Your model's assumptions will fail if you have certain errors in your data. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about the visualizations and analysis. While our main goal and the police department's main ask of us was to identify current and growing hotspots using trajectory modeling, we spent a lot of time looking for other insights that might also help reduce crime. We started by segmenting our data. One segmentation we did was looking at different categories of crime. For example, crime patterns among violent crimes versus property crimes. We also looked at crime patterns in different seasons and different times of day. Some of the insights were put into tables or charts using Excel or Stata. Some were better displayed using mapping in ArcGIS. ArcGIS was really useful for creating kernel density maps, which look like this. The math behind these maps is pretty interesting. If you want to read more about that, I will leave a link with more information in the description. That summarizes the visualizations section of the project pretty well, so now I'm going to talk about the modeling. 
As I mentioned earlier, we used group-based trajectory modeling to group together hotspots with similar trajectories of crime over time. This technique has been used in other social sciences to measure and explain differences across population members over time. This type of analysis gained popularity in the 1980s when psychologists, sociologists, and criminologists began to focus more on developmental processes instead of static events. For example, researchers have used trajectory modeling to study patterns of change in aggression as people age. So you can see how this type of model would be helpful in understanding crime rates over time. The model has three key outputs. The parameters describing the trajectory of each group, the estimated proportion of the population belonging to each group, and for each individual in the sample, the posterior probability of belonging to each group. The posterior probability is used to assign an individual to a group based on their highest probability. That's about as detailed as I want to get in a YouTube video. If you want to read more about the stats behind the model, check out the Seattle study in the description. The final step of the thesis was presenting our results to the police department. So in addition to the 300 plus page report, we put together a PowerPoint slide deck and shared the big takeaways in a roughly hour long presentation to the chief of police and other higher ups in the police department. And that was my senior thesis. I brushed over a lot, but hopefully you still learned something. Da, 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 da.